Hey guys, Basil and Will with Grayson Hobby, and today we're going to show you a new airplane receiver. I call them airplane receivers. It's the ER5A from Radio Master. Today we're going to show you a little bit of highlight of the receiver, and Will is going to show us how to bind it to our radio with the ELRS in it. Yeah, so we're going to be able to bind this without any bind plugs, and without pushing any buttons, etc. like that. The default binding procedure for the ER5A receiver. It's a mouthful. Yes. But it's coming. All right, guys, so what we have here is the Radio Master ELRS 5, or ER5A ELRS receiver. This is a five channel PWM receiver. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and open this up right here so you guys can see it without the shine of the bag. So we have this short subby antenna pre-installed, and then it comes with, I believe it's a 95 millimeter antenna um, externally that you can swap out by just popping the case open, et cetera. It does come with a little basic manual that tells you what, like the pin out, and all that, which with the ELRS, if you've ever used it, is programmable in the software. But overall, easy to bind, power tap a couple times, get into bind mode, unless you wanna do custom pairing codes, which later video, later information, stuff like that. But for the basics, this is a, all intents and purposes, five channel receiver that can take up to 8.4 volts input. So you can run high voltage LiPo or uh, servos on it if you really want to. Um, not sure if I'd go that crazy with it, but. So what, basically what we're gonna do here is we're gonna power it up, show how to pair it with a generic pairing from, if you had a brand new radio, brand new receiver, ELRS, without any software integration or changes. Um, so we're gonna bind it up real quick and then I'll connect the servo, show you guys that. Um, all right, so what we need to do is, I'm gonna connect the servo just for the showing you guys that's paired and all that, plugging in the servo, and now we need to do a power cycle. Um, but first I'm gonna go into the system menu on the transmitter. We're gonna go to system. Wait. There we go. And then tools, express LRS. And then we need to go to bind. So I'm gonna get ready to bind. I'm not actually gonna do it just yet. Oop, I push the button. Um, I'm gonna go down to bind, which you can touch it or you can do the wheel. I'm gonna do the wheel so you guys can see it. Okay, so you're not in bind mode yet. Not binding yet, because okay. we need to put the receiver in pairing mode, okay? okay? So we're gonna go, and this is two connections, which if you have a bind buddy, it make this a lot easier. I'm just gonna do it with this real quick. Um, but uh, we're gonna do one, two, and on the third one, we're gonna leave it plugged in. So one, two, third one plugged in. We got a double flash that's saying it's ready to pair. And you have roughly 30 to 60 seconds to get this bound before it goes to Wi-Fi. Then uh, push the button and you'll see the screen go back and you'll hear it say telemetry covered. You see a solid light on the receiver. That means it's paired. And now we have servo function. Okay. That's it. And that's a really easy pairing. You don't need any bind buttons or anything like that. It's purely through the power connection. If you want to get fancy, you can actually put your own custom pairing codes in the receiver and the radio. What does that mean? Basically, it's like a Wi-Fi connection with a password to where it, every time it's there, it's just connected. Um, so you don't have to do the pairing sequence, um, but you need to make sure you, when you update all the receivers that have the matching code. Okay. Um, it's like a Bluetooth lock. In the old days, we had to do frequency tuning. Do we need so to do frequency? So unlike the FreeSky receivers and stuff and some other receivers on the Radio Master with the ELRS, you don't have to do any frequency tuning. It's just paired and go. Nice. Um, there is adjustments you can do for packet rates, whether you're running digital servo, if you want super low latency or longer range, et cetera. Okay. Uh, there's different things you can do and you can play with that in the settings. The best thing to do is go on ELRS's wiki page and learn information about how to use your product. All right, guys, just to show you set up in a plane, we have a DW Cessna here that I've put in. Um, you can see I got the receiver right here on the side of the firewall or the fuselage. Um, just put it in there. It's the standard channels plugged in everything there. You got a wire harness for ailerons So with that in there Just plug it in now that it's been bound Find my plug <laughs> So we're plugged in Notice prop is off for safety. Yes So we got telemetry recovered. We got everything set here. We got some trim and all that but basically with this, Anyone there, the radio? Um, got set up, you know, got a throttle kill. But uh, basically, if you guys are curious, kind of also with the Radio Master, if you've never experienced anything, let me show you a little bit of the menus real quick. Um, so what we've done is inputs, and this could look completely uh, weird to people if you've never looked at it before, but essentially what I've done is on the input page, I've set up dual rates, expos, um, on the channels, you got your aileron, you got your elevator and rudder. I've done uh, a 70, 85, 100% uh, throws with very be, uh, between 35 and 40% expo on all the channels just for a maiden flight kind of thing because uh, I have not used this radio with this plane. 
Um, and then you can further do sub trims. I believe on this particular plane, I also had to reverse the channels. I did invert channel one and channel four. You could see it there. So um, that's a good question. So how do I know what, what channel one, what channel two, what channel three? Well, the default system you could see here, if we go back, um, for your inputs, you got channel one's aileron, channel two is elevator, channel three is throttle, channel four is rudder. Okay. Um, and you can see, uh, well, on the next page, you'll kind of see on the mixes as well, but it kind of has it defaulted there. That's typically your default TX-16 configuration. Okay. Guys coming from Spectrum JR, you're used to throttle, aileron, elevator, rudder. Uh, this is Fataba style uh, generic, which you can change the mapping in your personal radio if you just can't fathom a different order, uh, order you can change that okay. um, but you will the default fail safe just know on these receivers default fail safe uh, for low throttle is um, on channel three not on channel one so if you do change the mapping or the channel order throttle on channel one you will need to go and update your fail safe positions because you don't want 50 percent throttle from fail safe right okay that's cool all right, that's it. It's pretty easy to do, um, very simple. And stay tuned for the next video we're gonna do when Will takes two of these guys, two five channels, and makes it a 10 channel. Yeah, because right now, the only production receivers from Radio Master are five channel for PWM. So I'm gonna show you guys how to make that into two five channel receivers into a single 10 channel so you can get more potential and technically you could actually do three receivers Man, but we'll do that i tell you what back in the day i used to make an airplane so complicated i used to have the left half on one receiver and the right half on the other because i was just yeah. lazy but you were also always bound to both receivers having channel one through whatever right they were mimicking so this is a different thing to where we have two receivers bound to one radio but oh. we are changing the mapping on it to where one through five six through ten etc gotcha very cool mix and match you could have one three five seven or something on one receiver depending on how you have it mounted in the fuselage yep so make sure you hit that subscribe button uh so you'll be first to know when we release that video because i'm sure it'll be complicated it will be so hopefully that'll be a big screen you get to see what we're clicking and all that and then we'll be talking in the background all right <laughs>